Watch me paint ghosts on this thrifted painting. It's Spirit Halloween 2023, let's go see what's new! What are you picking up? Cause buy me one too. Give me money!
about this cute idea the other day. Rainbow spiderwebs, and we're creating them in second grade. Starting with a white oil pastel, we make a dot in the middle of our black paper. We then make crisscrosses to create eight different pizza slices. Then with a smiley line, we connect the top of our spider web and go all the way around, connecting as many spider web layers as we can. We then create little spiders. My students then get to color. Oil pastel turns out really bright, really beautiful, and my students had a blast with this. They turned out amazing. In art class, we're making some haunted families. My fifth graders are making spooky family portraits. They are so cute and so easy. This is how we make them. Starting on watercolor paper, I have my students tape down the edges for a nice clean border. Then they draw the members of their family in a very simple little ghost shape, including the eyes and features all in Sharpie. Once our pencil lines are erased, we go over our little family members with white Elmer's glue. When the glue has dried, it acts as a resist for when we put down our black and purple watercolor backgrounds. Once our watercolor is dry, my students get to add little pumpkin details to themselves and their families. We then go over with one more black outline. I also teach my students how to draw a really simple spider web. Using a Prismacolor pencil or a chalk marker, we write the names of our family members underneath their little ghosts. And then our family name at the top. Prismacolors work great for this. And then we re-outline in Sharpie. Slowly we take the tape off and we mat it on an orange background. Try it out! In this town we call home Everyone hail to the pumpkin song In this town Waiting for the next surprise Round that corner man hiding in the trap Go on and hand me your clothes Take a picture or two I can see you Deer's falling down at the party Saddest little baby in the room Fears tell me
season is fast approaching, which means it's time for Halloween nail tutorials. Let me show you guys a really easy way to paint the scream face. First thing I'm gonna do is paint a triple scoop ice cream cone. I know that sounds insane, but that's the easiest way I can describe this shape. It does not need to be perfect, just a rough outline. Then I'm gonna connect the top scoop of ice cream with the bottom two and generally round out the shape. Then fill it in. Now we're gonna go in with some black gel and simply paint a T in the lower portion of the shape. From here, we can easily turn the T into a triangle by connecting the two points at the top with the single point at the bottom. You can see his mouth starting to form. I like to round the top of mine, but you can leave it flat too, it doesn't really matter. Now we're gonna paint two little raindrop shapes next to each other for his nose. Now we're moving on to his eyes and I need you to think of kidney beans because that's the shape that they are. To paint the bean, you basically start with a single curved line, add a bump on either side and thicken it up. Now you'll never be able to unsee Scream's eyes as kidney beans. I'm so sorry. Okay, we're coming down the home stretch. He's already looking good, but we need to add his cape. Don't mind me doing it in pink. You can stick with the traditional black if you want, but you know, I just gotta spice things up. I've painted four Screams today, so. For the hood, I literally just outlined the head and then I'm just blocking in the rest of the cape at the bottom of the nail. Just switching to my tiny brush when I need to get into a more detailed spot. I felt like this polish was a little bit patchy, which makes sense because it's over like a black and gray nail. So I'm just going in for a second one. Once I did that, I was like, mm, you know, the face could probably use another coat too. So I sent that and just like that, you got Scream. And remember when I said I already painted four Screams today? Here's some of the ones I did earlier and I still have two more to go. Follow for more crazy nails. Let's do another haunted nail tutorial. Today's lesson is blood drips. This design looks easy, but it's kind of hard to nail. So let's go over it. First thing you want to do is paint several straight lines. Some should be long, some short, and some in the middle. Just make sure they're not too close together. Now for the fun part. Between each pair of lines, I want you to paint a little rainbow arch. Didn't think I would ever be bringing up rainbows in a blood tutorial, but that's where we're at. Next, you're going to start filling in the shape you just created with your little rainbows. While doing this, I also take the opportunity to thicken up some of the lines. Nobody likes a thin blood drip. Next step is to paint a little dot at the bottom of each line. If you have a dotting tool, you can use it here, but I always prefer the brush. Now we're going to complete our beautiful drips by connecting the original line we painted with the sides of each circle. You're basically forming a teardrop shape. When that's done, just go ahead and fill in any gaps you have left in the paint. You can also take this time to perfect the shape a little bit. And just like that, you're done! I hope this helped you feel less intimidated by this design. Let me know what I should paint next and follow for more casinos! I know the influence, I know the impact, and I know the vibes. And the girlies love the vibes, and that's just what it's about. to draw a ghost face step by step. First, make a oval, that being shape for eyes. Then add upside down hard shape for nose. Add circle for mouth and a cone attached. Then add bags under and over eyes. Now the edge of the mask bottom and top. Now at the hood. Finish with a sharpie outline.
ya llegó octubre y los artistas lo saben. Estos son los materiales básicos Pere el Inktober. Sketchup pequeño Pere lograr terminar todos los dibujos. Lápices Pere hacer bocetos y no fallar en el entintado. Rotuladores de varios tamaños Pere delinear y sombrear. Probando, probando antes del gran mes. ¿Ya tienes tus materiales listos? Black is traditional, but if you'd prefer pink, or vermilion, or chartreuse, though you might make me jealous. No way! You're not sewing buttons in my eyes! Oh, but we need a yes if you want to stay here. So sharp you won't feel a thing. Ow! There now. It's your decision, darling. We only want what's best for you. I'm going to bed, right now! Set the phases to run What's got you distraught? It's negative attention at best Let's call it nothing Maybe you something a little bit, a little bit Maybe you something It's a little all bit. about ascension, I guess Don't put me to rest And hand me your clothes. How to make spooky statues for your at-home graveyard. I started with a long stick. I put a foam head on top of it and cut up some pool noodles to make shoulders. I duct taped all of this in place. It's not pretty and that's fine. I also added a spine to give some curve to the back. Then I hammered a stake into the ground and screwed the stick to it. It stands up well on its own and is about human height. Then I took some cheap canvas drop cloths from my local hardware store and draped them over it to make the cloth. For each statue, I used one 9 by 12 canvas drop cloth. After that, I used truck bed liner spray to coat all of the canvas. This will stiffen it up and preserve all the wrinkles. Then I used this faux bronze spray paint to fill in all the folds of the fabric. While all of this is wet, I used a gloved hand to get in there and mess with it a little more to make it more dynamic. The spray will make the fabric stick to itself, so use that to your advantage. Then I used the jade color spray paint to create the patina. I did this by spraying down from above and highlighting the outer parts of the folds. The combination of this highlight and the bronze lowlights makes the statue look aged and weathered. By the way, if you're enjoying these videos, I'm now doing long-form spooky tutorials year-round over on Patreon as part of my new web series, Out of the Ether with Brandon Hardy. And that's it! Surround them with tombstones and spooky lighting for maximum impact. If you're really evil, you can hide a real among these and move when people walk by. Hopefully this gives you some ideas on...